Section 11.5 is partial fraction decomposition. So here's a review problem 3 over x plus 4 plus 2 over x minus 3. Go ahead and pause the video and simplify this expression. So in order to simplify this, you need a common denominator. So I'm just going to multiply the two denominators together. You get x plus 4 times x minus 3. So the first fraction needs the x minus 3 because it already has the x plus 4. So if you multiply that to the numerator and the denominator, you get 3 times x minus 3. The second fraction needs the x plus 4, so I'm going to multiply that to the numerator and the denominator. You end up with 2 times x plus 4. So to simplify that, you end up with 5x minus 1 over x plus 4 times x minus 3. So partial fraction decomposition starts with this one fraction and decomposes it into a sum or difference of multiple expressions. So, so far everything we've done is to go from this form to the simplified form. Now we're going to go from the simplified form to the decomposed form. So there's a few different cases. The first case is if the denominators have non-repeated linear factors. So the first thing you always want to do is factor the denominator as much as possible. So if we factor the denominator x squared plus x minus 2, it factors into x plus 2 times x minus 1. So we have two linear, the power is 1, the degree is 1, two linear factors that are multiplied together, two distinct linear factors. So when you have that, then the sum is just going to be one of each of the two denominators, and the numerators are just going to be constants. So this is how we set it up, a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 1. We don't know what a and b are, that's what we're going to solve for those numerators. So the way that we do that, we now have our setup, each denominator gets its own fraction, and then we keep going like we're going to combine them back together. So we need to give them their common denominators. So a needed an x minus 1, and b needed an x plus 2. So basically we went back this direction. We made a common denominator, but we know our numerators are going to be these unknown a and b's. So then I distribute it out. Your numerator is now ax minus a plus bx plus 2b. Well, we have this fraction here, which we know is what it is, and then this one where we're trying to solve for a and b. So if these two are equal, we already know the denominator is equal. That means the numerators must be equal. So if these two are the same, ax minus a plus bx plus 2b has to be equal to 3x plus 0. I added this 0 on the end because I have constants here, but I have no constants in the numerator over here. So now I can take this apart. If this thing must be equal to this thing, that means that a plus b times x, so I took the ones that have x's in them, must be equal to the 3x. Anything over here that has an x in it has to be equal to anything over here that has an x in it. Similarly, negative a plus 2b, anything that does not have an x in it, has to be equal to 0. They have to cancel out because there's no constants over here. So I took everything that has an x in it and I set it equal to what has an x on the right side, anything that does not have an x in it, so negative a and 2b, to anything that did not have an x in it on the right side. So now I have two equations with two unknowns. I'm going to solve this side for a, so I have a is equal to 2b. Here my x's just cancel off. I don't need to worry about them. So I can s plug in a here. 2b plus b is equal to 3. So then b is equal to 1, which means that a is equal to 2. So that means that this fraction, 3x over x squared plus x minus 2, if you write them as a sum of two fractions, is 2 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x minus 1. So I factored the denominator completely. Every unique linear factor became its own denominator. Each one got one degree less, a constant in the numerator. And then I gave it what it needed to make a common denominator, set it equal to the actual numerator, and solve for the missing pieces. So the second case is if you have repeated linear factors, so a linear term that's been squared, x has been squared, x minus 2 has been squared, then you have to have every possible denominator up to that highest power included. So if I have x squared, I have to have x and x squared. If I have x minus 2 quantity squared, I have to have x minus 2 and x minus 2 quantity squared. If this was x minus 2 quantity cubed, I'd have to have x minus 2, x minus 2 squared, and x minus 2 cubed. In this case, it's only squared, so I only go up to 2. Each of these, because they're linear, even though these are linears that have been squared, 
get one degree less, so they just get a constant. So I'm just going to put A, B, C, and D. They don't get any X's in the numerators. So now again, we need to make a common denominator. So every numerator needs to be multiplied by what it takes to get its denominator to be the common denominator. So for instance, this first one, I have an X. So to get a common denominator, I have to multiply by another X to get X squared, and I have to multiply by X minus 2 quantity squared to get that X minus 2 quantity squared. For B, it already has an X squared, so it just needs an X minus 2 quantity squared. Because it already has the X squared parts, it just needs this part. C, it already has 1 X minus 2, so it needs an X squared to get the X squared part, and it needs one more X minus 2. D already has both X minus 2's quantity squared, so it just needs an X squared. So it's what do I have to multiply this denominator by to get the common denominator? So go ahead and pause the video and FOIL all of this out. So if you FOIL everything out, you end up with AX cubed minus 4AX squared plus 4AX, that's from this first one, plus BX squared minus 4BX plus 4B, plus CX cubed minus 2CX squared plus DX squared. So that's if you FOIL everything out. So this would be the numerator, but we know the numerator is X plus 1. I put an empty space for my x cubes and my x squareds because they exist on the left side, but they don't exist on the right side. So I put some zeros in there, plus x plus 1. So this is the numerator that I got from making a common denominator up here, but I know it has to be equal to this numerator. So now I take my parts. I set all my x cubes together, all my x squareds together, all my linear x's, all my constants. So go ahead and pause the video and try and create four equations using your x cubes, your x squareds, your x's, and your linear, your constant terms. For example, I had an ax cubed and a cx cubed. So I know that a plus c has to equal zero because I had no x cubes on the right side. So go ahead, and if you haven't already done so, try the squareds, the linears, and the constants. So you end up with four equations. If you take the cube coefficient, so everything that's a coefficient of an x cubed, you get a plus c is equal to zero, because there's no x cubes in the original numerator. If you take the squareds, you get negative 4a plus b minus 2c plus d is equal to zero, because there's no x squareds in the original numerator. If you take the x's, you get 4a minus 4b is equal to 1 because there's 1x up here in the original numerator. And then if you take the constants, so the one that don't have any x's, you get 4b, that should be a positive 4b, is equal to 1 because you have one constant up here. So you end up, so now we have four equations with four unknowns and you can start to solve them. So go ahead and pause the video and solve for a, b, c, and d. So if you solve this over here, this would be easy. Divide both sides by 4, you get b is equal to 1 fourth. So then I plug that into this equation, and I simplified and got a to be 1 half. So then I took that and plugged that into the first equation and got c to be negative 1 half, and then plugged all three of those into the second equation and got d to be 3 fourths. So then your final answer is you just plug these in for a, b, c, and d up here. So now if we want to write x plus 1 over x squared times x minus 2 quantity squared as a sum of fractions. It'd be 1 half over x plus 1 fourth over x squared plus negative 1 half over x minus 2 plus 3 fourths over x minus 2 squared. So if you have repeated linear factors, a linear term that's been raised to a power, you need to include every power of that repeated linear term. And each numerator is just a constant. So our last case, I make it one case, the book makes it two separate cases, but it's if you have irreducible quadratic factors. So x squared plus 16, you can't factor that. Unlike the previous ones, you could factor them down to linear factors. There's no way you can factor x squared plus 16, so it's irreducible. So then it's numerator. All the previous ones we've had linear denominators. One degree less, the numerator was constant. Now we have a quadratic denominator, one degree less, the numerator is linear. So the numerator is always one degree less. 
On this one, I also included the repeated part. So just like the previous one, you have every power up to whatever powers in the actual denominator. So we have x squared plus 16 and x squared plus 16 squared. Everything else we do is exactly the same, except for the numerator just has multiple parts to it. So go ahead and pause the video and give each numerator its missing pieces for the common denominator. So ax plus b has one x squared plus 16, but needs another one to get the squared. So ax plus b times x squared plus 16. cx plus d already has the common denominator, so it doesn't need anything. So are we, now we have ax plus b times x squared plus 16 plus cx plus d. So go ahead and FOIL this all out and set it equal to our actual known numerator, including spaces or zeros for any missing terms. So if you FOIL this out, you end up with ax cubed plus 16ax plus bx squared plus 16b plus cx plus d. And we want to set that equal to our known numerator, x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. You want to have every term on the right side that you have represented on the left side. So go ahead and pause the video and write your four equations for each x cubed, x squared, x, and constant term so that you have four equations for your four unknowns. So looking at the x cubed, we only have one x cubed, so we know that a has to equal 1 because it was the only x cubed on the left side. For x squared, again, we only have one x squared, so we know b has to equal 0 because it's the only x squared on the left side. For linears, we have 16a plus c is equal to 0 because we have none on the right side. And then for constants, we have 16b plus d is equal to 1. So go ahead and pause the video and solve for your four variables. So if you solve these, we know a has to equal 1 and b has to equal 0. So I plugged in b over here and got d is equal to 1. I plugged in a here and got c is equal to 16, negative 16. So my final answer was 1x over x squared plus 16 plus negative 16x plus 1 over x squared plus 16 squared. So when you have non-reducible quadratics, you can't factor them. Their numerator are linears, ax plus b. And then similarly, if you have repeated, you have to do your every term up to whatever exponent is demonstrated.